In this video, we'll talk about allergy. Allergies are body's immune response to apparently harmless substance such as pollen, animal dander, or certain food. Many of the cases, allergy doesn't range in big symptoms. Generally, it leads to rashes or itchiness in the skin, but sometimes it could be life-threatening. Allergy can be treated with antihistamines and many other kind of drugs. In this video, we'll talk about these things in details. So what causes really allergy? People are allergic to many things such as let's say food items like peanut, gluten, eggs, crabs or seafood. Sometimes apart from food items, people are also allergic to dust, wool or it, let's say insect sting. So allergy could be caused due to many reasons. Anything that causes allergy is known as allergen. Now these allergenes are external entities which leads to allergic responses in your body but also there are genetic predisposition that can make you more vulnerable towards allergy and it happens in a syndrome known as hyper ige syndrome if you want to learn about it in details the video is in the i button so allergenes are substances that can cause allergy now many of the cases let's say allergen is pollen grain and you inhale the pollen grain via your nostrils. So the cellular and molecular players which lead to these allergic responses are mast cells, basophils and IgE antibodies secreted by plasma cells. So allergies are also known as type 1 hypersensitivity and the onset of these reactions are pretty much immediate in order of minutes. So let's talk about the immunology of allergy in a bit more details. We would take the example of inhaling pollen grain and let's see what really happens. So in the airway epithelial cells, we would find there are uh, mucus layers, the epithelial cells and underneath that we might find uh, antigen presenting cells such as dendritic cells or macrophages which can engulf these uh, pollens or allergenes and ultimately display some of them onto class 2 MHC molecules. Eventually, they would migrate towards the lymph node and show these peptides to specific T helper cells. And it would lead to a T helper cell activation. Once T helper cell is activated, it proliferates massively. Eventually, it differentiates into Th2 subtype of T helper cell. Th2 subtype cells interact with naive B cell and instruct them to differentiate into a plasma cell which secretes IgE antibodies. IgE antibodies are key molecular players in the allergic responses. So what really happens? So let's say we are uh, exposed to any kind of allergen for the first time. In this case, mast cells would be bound to IgE antibodies. And mast cells has FC receptor that can bind to these IgE antibodies. Question is where does these IgE antibodies come from? These IgE antibodies are produced in response to the allergy, allergen exposure. Now this phase is known as basically sensitized phase. Mast cells are now ready to degranulate but they didn't degranulate yet. Next time when allergen binds in a second exposure, there is severe degranulation of the mast cells. And this degranulation leads to many cellular changes. So overall, it's important to understand there are two phases of allergy. First is sensitization phase where the mast cell is ready to degranulate. And the second phase is actually degranulation phase where mast cell secretes all the granules containing histamine and many other proteins. So the molecular underpinning uh, of this is a bit more complicated. When IgE binds to uh, FC receptor and allergen binds to it, it leads to activation of a signaling cascade which involves lin kinase. Eventually, it activates protein kinase C or the MAP kinase pathway to produce several molecular components such as prostaglandins, cytokines, chemokines, histamines, etc. Now, this mast cell degranulation leads to bronchoconstriction. It can activate glandular secretion, smooth muscle constriction, and vasodilation. Mast cell granule composition is diverse. It has different type of granules such as serine protease containing granules, which has tryptase, chymase, histamine or serotonin containing granules, granules that contain proteoglycans, 
like heparin, which is a potent anticoagulant. There would be also lysosomal enzyme containing granules. Cytokines are plenty. They secrete TNF alpha, interleukins, stem cell factors, chemokines, eosinophil chemotactic factors, all these things. And also, a category of proteins that are secreted are known as lipid mediators. So, these lip lipid mediators are potent uh, activator of inflammation. So, mast cells actually affect bacteria and parasite infection so they are good in our body but sometimes they are hyper responsive to allergens and they can interact with dendritic cells b cells and t cells in an abnormal fashion to give rise to problem in our body now mast cells and basophils both of them are secreting histamine and that lead to all the uh, changes in during the allergy Histamine which is secreted by these cell types can bind to several histamine receptors, several category of histamine receptors such as H1 receptors, H2, H3 or H4 receptor present in different different organs and all that has different kind of outcomes, cellular outcomes. One of the prominent outcome is to evoke inflammation. Now one severe format of allergy is basically anaphylactic shock when there is a severe outburst of allergic responses and uh, that leads to dramatic decrease in blood pressure suddenly the airways become narrow it would be harder to breathe it lead to weak pulses rapid heart rate nausea like feeling severe blister like skin rashes and this is pretty life-threatening if not treated so immediately in those cases epinephrine injection and followed by that a uh, visit to uh, emergency room is really important so let's talk about the treatment of allergy so first of all prevention is better than cure so obviously one can avoid allergen if they know what they are allergic to for example sometimes avoiding seafood or wearing woolen clothes could save you sometimes you are exposed to allergens such as pollen grains which you have no control on so in that cases antihistamines can be very useful for treatment and they would be treating all the symptoms of allergy anyway epinephrine injections are generally prescribed when the situations are severe like in anaphylactic shock in case of severe conditions steroids might be applied such as cortisol which acts like an immunosuppressant but before taking any medication one should always consult a doctor that's pretty much summarize the video on allergy. You can get more notes and flashcards in my Facebook page or you can also follow us on Instagram for notes. You can find all the links in the description. You can support our channel via Super Thanks. You can pay via Paytm, PayPal or UPI. Your small contribution would mean a lot for me. See you in next video.